Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So before we proceed with this episode, what I would like to tell you is that if you have not seen the system design introduction video, wherein we have discussed about the architecture of this mini project that we are building, I would highly recommend you to check the same. I will leave a link to the description as well so that you can click, check the same and then get back onto the video. So in the last video, we have seen how to do load balancing, how to configure Nginx and how to get things done in Nginx using the configuration and uh, we have also tested it with our mini load test setup and we saw that it was evenly distributed across the services that we were running. So as I have mentioned earlier, so today what we are going to do is we are going to understand about Kubernetes. We'll see how to use it in local, though it's not meant to be used in local, but we are going to understand what it is, how to use it and uh, several other things. Before we proceed, uh, let's check on the containers that we have so let me just have a look over here so yesterday's all the containers are here so let's um, so let me go ahead and clean them up let's check again and what we are left with is cassandra redis and mysql those are the things that we need so let it be there and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and check the images that we have and uh, do a cleanup if required there are a lot of dangling images because we we did a build yesterday so um, we can do a docker rmi so i'm going to go ahead and delete all these images so we'll have something cleaner now so yeah we have all the required images and um, we are good now so once again i'll list down all the images and all the containers that i have and so that you have a clear understanding so over here all the images that you see is either created by us or has been downloaded right so <clears throat> so now what we are going to do is we'll go ahead and go to the docker um, desktop ui so here i have the docker desktop ui as you see over here so what we are going to do is we are going to enable it so currently you can see only the docker logo so you can uh, go ahead and change it to enable kubernetes so you'll see a kubernetes over here so you can just say enable kubernetes and uh, show system containers so once you enable it a lot of containers will be created and it will be for your kubernetes and we are going to do a apply and restart and it will go ahead and um, install whatever is required it will go ahead and pull all the images that's required to run kubernetes and it will start it up and uh, you can see over here that the logo has changed that uh, docker is running kubernetes is not running but it's starting up as you can see over here so in uh, some time it will have kubernetes running as well and again you can uh, configure fully your uh, docker over here the amount of memory you wanted to give it to him and the uh, disk image size and everything can be configured so where do we keep the images location and all so i have given this location over here d drive docker vm so you can see that we have um, some uh, mount over here so you can see that it is a hard disk image file so everything is being served from here so if you see the properties it's going to be pretty big in size we have images of around 9 gb in size so uh, by default it will be in c drive but i have changed it and uh, you will get uh, so many different kind of um, settings over here that you wanted to uh, play around with right so uh, back to the kubernetes as we see that it's still starting because it needs um, quite a few uh, images in order to start so it's going to go ahead and download all those images and then it will start the kubernetes and uh, if you don't check this um, box over here show system containers then you won't be able to see those kubernetes images but in our case we wanted to see that's why we have checked it you must be wondering why i have opened the docker hub page over here so what we are going to do is we are going to download the kubernetes dashboard so that we can see the pods and understand them in a lot more details so you can see this image uh, by kubernetes ui so kubernetes ui dashboard uh, you can get all the details uh, of this image so this uh, over here so you'll find that um, we'll end up seeing a dashboard something like this wherein you'll see all the details of the pod so this is the official kubernetes dashboard and uh, we can access it and we can uh, monitor our uh, pods and uh, containers that we have what are the jobs running and things like that 
So all these links that you see over here, I'm going to share them in the description. So please go ahead and click it if you wanted to um, access it or check it out. So let's see where we are in Kubernetes. So now you can see that we have both uh, in a running state, both Kubernetes and uh, Docker is running. So what we'll do is we'll quickly go to the console and see if there are new images being added. Well, you can see that there are so many images that's been added over here. So you can see a bunch of KHS, right? So KHS is the short form for Kubernetes. So, so there are a lot of images downloaded by the system for Kubernetes. These are nothing but our system containers or images, you can say. And let's go ahead and see what are the containers that's up and running. And you can see that there are a lot of containers that are running at the moment, right? There is a whole bunch of K8 containers that's running. We didn't had anything running um, until that point, right? It was all in an exited state, right? And uh, now we see that there are a lot of containers running. So we are going to go ahead and use this Kubernetes dashboard as we have just discussed. So what we'll do is we'll um, go to their GitHub repository. I have already have it open. And before we proceed, let, let us also verify that we have kubectl installed in our system. So this command should work um, fine. Where we are going to try out kubectl version. And it should uh, show you the version. We have the client version and the server version you can see over here. So uh, this signifies that kubectl is there so with that what we can do is we can check the pods and everything so you can just do a get pods and there are no pods and uh, we can check for jobs and um, there are no jobs at the moment it's a fresh installation so what we are going to do is first we are going to set this up over here so as you can see on their github page um, so they have mentioned how do you install so you basically do this in order to install it so let's go ahead and try it so uh, what we'll uh, quickly do is we'll copy this command over here. So let me copy this. So you can just uh, click this to get it copied. And uh, what we'll try over here is to run this command. So this should go ahead and install the dashboard for us and uh, create another dashboard UI. And we should be able to see the dashboard um, now. So we are um, done with the installation part. So installation is complete now. And what we are going to do next is to get uh, the access to the dashboard so we have to set up a proxy so as mentioned over here what we need to do is to use a kubectl proxy so that we can access the dashboard so i'm going to go ahead and do a kubectl proxy and um, it is starting the proxy now i can't close this so if i close this i won't be able to access it so um, let it be open and uh, this is the link to the dashboard so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this link so let me just um, copy this link here and uh, let's open in a new tab. Well, uh, what, hap what has happened is we have uh, created it uh, fine. And uh, now what we need is a token. And uh, if you see over here, how do you get a RBAC token? They have given the all the steps. Authentication RBAC token, they have given all the steps over here. So we are going to follow these steps and we are going to generate a token for us so that we can use that token. So we are going to go ahead and check on um, creating this um, user that they have mentioned. So this is nothing but a role based access control that uh, the token that will be issued to us will have uh, the uh, role based token. So uh, all the privileges and everything will be there. So let's go over here and uh, creating a sample user. They have uh, told us over here how do we do it and uh, how to get the token and everything has been described in this um, uh, documentation over here so let's go ahead and get it done we'll, we should get a token some which looks something like this and we need to enter that token right so we'll um, start over and uh, okay so let's follow what they have mentioned over here and uh, we should be able to get our token doing so so what we need to do is we need to get this and we have to apply this so what uh, we are going to do is we are going to grab this and we will open our project folder over here. So we are inside our project folder over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file a folder over here called Kubernetes. Where I'm going to keep all this and I'll check it in so that you also get help out of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new document over here. And um, it will be nothing but we are creating a service account. So I'll call it service underscore account. And uh, this is a YAML file. 
so the file is over here and i'm going to open with the notepad and i'm going to paste whatever i have copied from there so we are good so let's let me close this and uh, let's go back to the um, steps over here and the next thing that they are telling is we are creating a service account with admin user so this is the name of the user and uh, this is the namespace kubernetes dashboard right okay so i am inside the kubernetes folder and where we have our file also we have just created service account.yml file we are going to apply this uh, file over there so we are now going to use qctl apply and uh, slash f and we have the yaml file cube um, service account dot yaml so we are going to apply this so you can see over here that our account has been created as you see that admin user created service account slash admin user has been created so we are good with the first step and we have successfully created our um, service account and the next step that we are going to do is a creating a cluster role binding so what we'll do is we are going to get hold of this over here and we are going to go inside our folder once again and we are going to create a new file this time and um, i'm going to give the same name cluster role binding yaml and uh, i'm going to put this over here whatever is in this um, yml file over here so basically this content over here and what we are going to do is we are going to save this and uh, close it once again and going back to our command prompt again we are going to do the same thing we are going to do your kubectl apply slash f and we have the file called um, cluster role binding and once we do that you can see that your role binding has been created so authorization gate is done so now that we have got our role binding as well so what we are going to do is we are going to get the bearer token which is the last step in order to configure our dashboard so we need to run this command and uh, let me copy it using this and we need to uh, perform this from the powershell so let's get into the powershell and we are going to paste this command and uh, you can see over here that uh, this is the token right so what we'll do is we'll get hold of this token so you can save it as well because if you lose it you do have to do it all over again and get it generated so it's highly recommended that, that you go ahead and uh, generate it and uh, once you get this key what we will do is we don't need this window anymore we'll go to the kubernetes dashboard and uh, select the token over here and don't go for the cube config and paste the token that you have just got over here and you just do a sign in and you can save it okay so you can see that we are in the dashboard so we have finally made it to our dashboard and you have all your job pods everything running over here so this is how a kubernetes dashboard looks like so you can just go to all namespace and you'll be able to see the internal pods and um, containers everything over here the replica set everything over here so soon what we'll do is we'll also try to deploy one of our application or we can create a small application and try with that first and uh, we will see all of them replica set pods deployments everything we'll see what they are when to use uh, which one and things like that we'll try to explore at least whatever i know i'll try to explain so this will give you a feel of the real-time thing in your proper deployment you will come across dashboard like this wherein you'll open the pods from each of the pods if you wanted to get the logs you can see the logs every pod will have its log over here so we are going to use our application and see this log so that it makes more sense to us right so we'll see the jobs we'll see the pods we'll see the replica sets and everything in much more details so yeah that's all from this video what i thought is that i'll keep this video short and i will keep it only to the installation of kubernetes how to use the docker desktop in order to enable kubernetes and how to get your kubectl up checking the version setting up your kubernetes dashboard and getting the access token and all those things that we have done over here in order to get the token setting up the account and things like that in the next part what we are going to do is we are going to take our application url feeder service and we will create a yaml file and we'll try to deploy it 
we'll first uh, we'll first use the docker repository to push the image to the docker repo and from the yaml file we are going to pull the image again and we are going to create pods out of it and from pods we'll do replica set from replica set we'll see deployments and things like that in much more details and uh, we'll go step by step from there so yeah stay tuned stay subscribed and uh, please refer this to your friends as well who's willing to learn so that the channel also grows and uh, and you also help them to grow so yeah that's all from this video see you soon again bye bye and take care